Assalamu alaikum, shalom, namaste, what's popping, what's cracking, what's stacking, what's happening Welcome to Rolling Ratchet, I'm your host Nizzy Nice and I want to say thank you for tapping in So today we are talking about rap music and opioids, the danger Now if you ask me, this all started with a drink that's popular among southern rappers called Lean And what is Lean? Well let's find out Also known as Scissor, Dirty Sprite or Purple Drink Lean is made by mixing prescription strength cough syrup with soda and sometimes fruit flavored candy. The beverage has become popularized in hip hop music over the years, with famous rappers featuring and drinking lean in their music videos, which in turn has made it more popular on social media where fans try to imitate their favorite rap stars. A lot of niggas in the hood and shit, niggas don't know that it's an opiate. But then after a while, you drink so much and then they want to take yeah. perks. Yeah. Then they want to start taking Percocets. And then they don't know why they like the perks and now they're addicted to perks. It tastes good. Yeah. If something tastes this good, like you would think for something that have opiates and all that shit and it, it'd be nasty. Yeah. If you put that shit in some Sprite. It's in a cup. Now, when it comes to what rap group made Lean popular, it's got to be 3 Six Mafia. When they came out with that song, Sipping on Some Scissor, that joint was hard. And me being from New York, I had no idea what they was talking about in the song. I just knew I liked the song because the hook was catchy. And if it came on, on on the club or on the radio, you found yourself singing that hook, Sipping on Some Scissor. Now, when it comes to what solo artists probably made Lean popular, it's probably got to be Lil Wayne. Because he gave so many interviews about Lean and when people was talking about him stopping after he had the seizures. He said, why would he stop? He said, since he's been sipping Lean, he's been making better music and just got richer. And let me tell you a short story about Lil Wayne. And this is why you got to watch the environment that you're in. One New Year's Eve, I'm in Miami and Club Live. And if you've ever been to Club Live on a Sunday in Miami, you already know it's turned. So imagine New Year's Eve weekend on a Sunday. Extra turned up So I'm in the club I see 2 chains. I see Lil Wayne They got these big ass styrofoam cups Filled with ice I see him pour the soda in Then I see him pour the syrup And I'm not gonna lie In that moment right then If I was offered a cup I might have made a bad decision Now I've never sipped syrup in my life And never had no desire to do so But in that moment In that environment We was having so much fun Everything was lit I might have made a bad decision And this is why you have to watch the environment you're in Because if you're around people that's doing certain things long enough You might be influenced to do the same And trust me when I tell you Everything is not for everybody Some people can do things and still maintain a normal lifestyle And some people might just get strung out and become addicts Now that's what happened to Joel Santana When Joel Santana started hanging out with Lil Wayne I think it was back in 2010 or 2011 When he was working on this album called I Can't Feel My Face Joel started sipping lean every day with Lil Wayne and Joel's got addicted. I was drinking lean yeah. and did I have addiction to lean? For sure. Like mm. I was addicted to the point to where I was drinking it every day and mm. and if I stopped drinking it, yeah, I would have got sick because that's really? what happens with the opiates. You know what I mean? And then, you know, me and Wayne being close and recording the album at that time didn't help. Ooh. Of course, you know what I mean? We were fully just ah, not feeling our face all yeah. around the floor. Speaking of Lil Wayne, when we look at this footage of him right here, we gotta hope it's not the lean that got him looking like this. Now, when we talk about lean, there's one other person we can't forget. I'm talking about a rapper that was so cold, he used to wear a mink coat in Texas. The late, great Pimp C. Now, a lot of people think that Pimp C overdosed on lean, but his cause of death is codeine consumption and sleep apnea, which will mean lean didn't kill him directly, but it might have played a part in his death. Now let's talk about another drug that rappers have made popular, Percocets. All we hear now in rap music is pop a perk, pop a perk, pop a perk. Now from my understanding, a Percocet is a painkiller that you might get from your dentist or any other doctor. But rappers have made it popular. Now here's a rapper named Rich Homie Kwan, uh, an artist who music I happen to like. Let's listen to him talk about why he takes Percocets. To make a statement. Listen, not to be personal, but uh, what do you carry in your bag? Uh, right now, what I have in my bag yeah. is... What's in your bag? He's opening it. I love uh, it. Here we go. I got a do-rag. Do-rag. Yeah, I got some headphones. Oh, you come prepared. Um, got a little travel kit. Oh, what's you're What's in the so travel cute. kit? Um, <laughs> I don't mean to be TSA or anything, but... Hey, <laughs> Percocet. He's Percocet. holding up the flight. <laughs> we got Percocet and toothbrushes. For real? <laughs> Can I see the Percocets? Yeah. Oh. Cruz is so into it. 
Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> hey, in a baggy classic. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, then yeah, that, that, what's the street value on something like this? This oh, size man. Garcia, you know, you used Percocet, to sell drugs. That was a Percocet 10. <laughs> <laughs> that probably there, what? A, 83 two, Percocet 10. Two, two bucks, maybe? Uh, nah, man. My like Keep it a buck. A How much? Eight dollars a pill. Eight dollars a pill? Yeah, probably like 15 pills in there. Yo, if you They're get... only eight dollars? Well, it's, yeah. it's a pain reliever, though. You know what I'm saying? But it's you a have... pain reliever. Yeah, it's a pain reliever, so, so like, it's not, it's not I, crazy. I basically use them on the plane. Like, so if I eat, I got to make sure I eat good. You got to make sure you, you can't eat them on, take them on an empty stomach. You'll be throwing up. Like, yeah, you, you might shit so, yourself, too. Yeah, then I'm so small, so I have to eat, like, three times. Then I take one and go to sleep and wake up, feel like a new man. For real? Yeah. Any hangover on this? Oh, nah, no hangover. Nah, right? Eight dollars. Great, great with sex, too. Eight, <laughs> great with sex. Yeah. And my bulk But you got to buy in bulk, though. You got to buy in bulk. Yeah, you gotta buy them in bulk. Here you right. go. Let me get those back. Right there, you go. Let me get those back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, can those. I see a prescription for those? Uh, nah. <laughs> nah. Uh, no. Nah, not really. Man, how did we get here? And when I say that, I mean, how did we get to the point where smoking weed was not enough? When did rappers start popping all these pills? And it's crazy because if you think about five or ten years ago when rappers wasn't taking all these pills, they was just smoking weed, a lot of these issues didn't exist. You didn't have rappers overdosing or strung out needing to go into rehab. It's crazy, but I guess that's just the times that we living in now. Now, I know a lot of rappers are addicted to these drugs, but Meek Mill is the first rapper that I ever heard publicly say that he was addicted to Percocets. Your phone, like, oh, shit, I, I got up on my PO probably a week ago, and I'm like, I'm gonna call her because she was actually a good PO, you know, right. she a model probationer. She asked me that I have a problem when I was addicted to opioids. I said, Yeah, she went and got me help. You talk about being addicted to opioids, and you see a lot of these young rappers dying because of opioid use. Yeah, do you ever be like, Yo, I escaped to, I escaped to bullet with that shit? Yeah, hell yeah, I be, I be telling them, like, I'm damn near a preacher, I'm gonna have. I be having to tell a young guy, yo, bro, that shit, you know, that shit really will kill you. Like, this ain't like weed. Mm -hmm. This ain't weed and liquor we talking about. We talking about some new, it's a new epidemic. So we got to find out 10 years from now what it do to your bodies when you take them at a high rate. Did you have any scares when you was wilding on the, the, no, the serpent? No, I probably was taking it. I never, I, I, I never disclosed it. Never, I tell them, I'm taking 10 30s Percocets a day. You walking with death. God damn. Yeah, real shit. Crazy shit. You pop two in the morning. They gonna wear off by four. What y'all saying? Yo, man, saying I'm saying too much over here. <laughs> <laughs> but my shit gonna be he's the telling the truth, though. though. He's telling the truth. Huh? Yeah, but kids can learn from this, yeah, though. Yeah, you need to know, though. Don't let them stop you. Because they some of their favorite artists popping 20, 30s on the low, about to die, and nobody catering to what's going on. I had That's to cater real. to myself. I'm like, nigga, you popping 10 perks. You a, you a junkie, nigga. We don't... We don't Damn, who knew Meek was popping pills like that? But shout out to Meek Mill for being honest and being vulnerable. And hopefully his story can help somebody else stop. Now, when we talk about Percocets, there's one other rapper that we have to mention. Rest in peace to Juice World. Juice World overdosed on Percocets and died. But the way it happened was really crazy. So he's on a private flight with his homies and they're about to land in Chicago. But before they land, the pilot calls authorities and tell them that there's guns on the plane so when they land back in chicago and they see the police on the runway juice world panics and swallows a bunch of percocets now the crazy part is when the police searched the plane they found three guns and 70 pounds of weed which in my opinion means that they was all going to jail anyway why swallow all those pills when y'all going to jail anyway why not just take the charge for everything that's on there but as a result he panicked he swallowed the pills and because of that he died a waste of a tremendous talent once again rest in peace the juice world now let me tell you a story about how i got doped up unintentionally i go to the dentist for surgery and they didn't put me to sleep they injected me with something and to this day i'm really not sure what they injected me with i think it was morphine but i felt so good that I can clearly remember telling God, God, I don't ever want to feel this good again. Like I felt so good, I knew it had to be wrong. And if that's what Percocet makes you feel like, then I know Percocet is definitely not for me. Now, let's talk about another drug that rappers have made popular, Xanax, or in the streets, they're called Xans. Now I'm told that this drug can be the most dangerous of them all. Which is shocking to me because I was under the impression that people took Xanax 
for anxiety. I was told that calms you down, it chills you out. Now, I got a cousin in Philly, shout out to my cousin Jay, and he was telling me that part of the reason why the homicide rate is so high in Philadelphia, because of these dudes in the street popping Zans or Xanax. And he was telling me that Xanax, it takes away your emotion, right? Like, you know how you could like, could be about to do something dangerous and you get that feeling in your stomach, the butterflies. Well, let me put it another way. Have you ever been driving with a suspended license and police get behind you and you think if you get pulled over, how you going to jail? You know that feeling you get in your stomach? Right, that feeling. Well, I'm told if you're on a Xanax that that feeling is gone, which means you have no fear. Like, emotion is a fear and Xanax takes away your emotion. So these dudes in the street who probably already want to kill somebody, once they take a Xanax, it's easier for them to kill because they don't have that emotion of fear. They don't fear getting caught. They don't fear getting killed, trying to kill somebody else. So as a result, they go on these drills, which is another way for saying they go out to kill somebody. Now, kids, if you're watching this and not just kids, I want to say young adults, too. Don't be influenced by these rappers taking all these drugs. I know when you look at them on the gram, the, all the jewelry, the cars, the money, and you think to yourself, well, if they're doing all these drugs and they're successful, I can do it too. But this is only what they show you. They only show you what they want you to see. You have no idea of their struggles and addiction behind closed doors. And you'll be graded without drugs. Trust me when I tell you. I hope this video has helped someone. I want to thank you for watching. I'm Nizzy Nice and we rolling ratchet.